Hi everyone, my name is Johannes van Lindungan. I'm working on the backend for campaigns related features in Foodpanda. And now I'm going to talk about how we implemented location-based campaigns in Foodpanda. So this is the outline of the presentation. The first one is introduction. Second one, I'm going to talk about the problem. And the third one is solution. Foodpanda is a food delivery app. It is available in web, Android, and iOS. Foodpanda serves 11 countries in Asia Pacific and two countries in Europe. Now let's talk about the problem. My team is currently handling several features related with campaigns in Foodpanda. One of them is campaign carousel. Let's open the website to see how it works. Here you can put your location and then click delivery. Then we can see the campaigns on top of the page. We have four campaigns right now. Let's say we click free delivery. Now we can see a bigger image of the campaign on top. And then we can see the restaurants list with free delivery. Okay, let's go back to the slide. This is the simplified architecture of the process. So user open the app, app requests the list of campaigns to campaign API, and then campaign API will send the list of campaigns. And then user can see the campaigns from the app. Okay, what is a campaign? Campaign has multiple restaurants with the same promotion. It can be discounts, vouchers, free delivery. Campaign can also promoting new restaurants or restaurants in a specific area, etc. So where do these campaigns come from and how do we configure which restaurants can be a part of it? So marketing teams create campaigns and assign restaurant to its campaigns using our internal tool. Its campaign has multiple restaurants now, each restaurant has multiple delivery areas. Users can, cannot get the food from the restaurant if they are outside of the delivery area. Now that we have enough context, we need to answer this question. How to show campaigns based on user location? We have to make sure that there is at least one restaurant delivering to the user before we can show the campaign. So no restaurants delivering to you means no campaigns to you. The first solution comes in our mind probably this. Check one by one if user location is inside restaurant deliveries, delivery areas. Let's say we have campaign one. It has three restaurants. Each restaurant has three delivery areas. So we check if the user is inside delivery area one by one until we found that it is inside delivery area 3C. Then we, we can show the campaign to the user. But we have around 10 active campaigns per country, around 9,000 restaurants per campaign, around 10 delivery areas per restaurant. So we need to do around 900,000 location checks for all delivery areas per user request, which will be very slow. We refine our solution over time until we found our current best solution, which is using GeoHash. GeoHash encodes a geographic location into a short string of letters and digits. Let's open a website to understand more about GeoHash. This is a map of the world where you can see the GeoHash of the place you click. That. Okay, let's go to Singapore, for example. If we click the box, then we zoom in, we can see that every time we go deeper one box, the string appended by one character. The geohash is filled recursively inside the bigger geohash.
So yeah, let's go back to the slide. This is the GeoHash Dimension tables. The longer the length, the smaller the box. Okay, so how do we use GeoHash to solve our problem? First, let's see the example case. Let's say we have four campaigns. The campaign one will be the same as the previous example. It has three restaurants with three delivery areas each. Now let's say this is the coordinate of a delivery area for a restaurant in campaign one. Then we generate the GeoSs with precision 5 inside the polygons of the delivery area. Why 5? As we can see here, GeoS with precision 5 means the width and the height is 4.9 kilometers. We discussed with business team and we decided that this precision is enough for us. There are many ways to generate GeoSs inside polygon. But the simplest one is we take the lat long of the center of the polygon, convert it to GeoHash, and then we check its neighbor if it is inside the polygon. Then we check its neighbors, neighbors, etc. until we found the GeoHash intersecting with the polygon. Then we, we get four GeoHashes here, W21Z7, W21ZE, etc. Then the next thing we need to do is we map the campaign ID with the restaurant GeoHas and store it in our DB. You can store it as a key in Redis or anything, but in our case we store it in similar format in DynamoDB. All of the previous steps are being done when the marketing teams create the campaigns. Now let's talk about the use case from the consumer side. The first one, user open the front end app and then front-end send a request with country and users let long to get the list of campaigns from Campaigns API. In Campaign API, we convert the users let long to GOS with precision 5, and then get the list of campaigns in specified country, and then for each campaign, we query the database to check if the map of campaign ID and user GOS is exist. If yes, we can show the campaign to the user and then we send the list of campaigns to front-end and then user can see the location-based campaigns so now we only have one query to database per campaign let's see more details with the example case let's say this user is inside the delivery area of restaurant 3 in campaign 1 and then our campaign API get the user let long from front-end app then convert it to GeoHas with precision 5, we got W21ZS. Then we get our campaigns from our DB, we got 4 campaigns. Then we just need to check for each campaign combined with user GeoHas. If it is accessed in our database, that means there, there is a restaurant delivering to this user. Then we can show the campaign 1 to the user. That's all. Now we only need one query to the database per campaign. Another optimization we can do is the first one is using cache for our database query results. And the second one is using concurrency when querying the database. In our case, since we are using Golang, we use GoRoutines to do the check per campaign and then send the results to a channel wait for all GoRoutines to finish, and send the list of campaigns to the front-end app. With our current solution, we are currently handled 23.7k peak requests per minute. Our average response time is 1.15 millisecond. Of course, this is excluding network latency. Okay, that's all. I hope this talk can be useful for everyone. Thank you very much.